always wanted to create a dripping paint Photoshop effect but never knew exactly how or where to start? Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck since in this video I'm going to walk you through the entire process and show you how easy it is to do so. I'm Andrew and you're watching an Envato Task Plus tutorial. We're going to start by downloading the project images included with the original written tutorial and then opening up the colored version, making sure to place the sketch one on top, heading over to File, Place Embedded. Once we've placed the second image, we're going to quickly resize it so that it fills in the entire canvas. Next, we're going to set up a new 1000 by 1000 pixels document using the Ctrl N keyboard shortcut, we will create our dripping brushes. As soon as we have our document, grab the pen tool and with the tool mode set to shape and the fill color to black, start drawing the first of our four dripping shapes. Once you're done, we're going to head over to Edit, Define Brush Preset in order to add a shape to our brush library, making sure to give it a custom name. Using the exact same process, create three more varying dripping shapes, making sure to define each one as its own brush preset. Take your time, and once you're done, close the document since we'll no longer need it. As soon as we finish creating our brushes, we're going to go back to the original image and create a painting effect using a specific area of the photo. Start by creating a new layer using the Ctrl Shift N keyboard shortcut, naming it Painting. Hide the sketch effect layer, and with the painting one selected, grab a soft brush. and paint over the area that you want to turn into a painting using the brush tool. Control click on the layer's thumbnail to make a selection of this layer and after hiding it, select the background layer and use the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut to create a new layer using the selection. Toggle back the sketch effect layer and then drag this new one above it within the layers panel, renaming it to subject. Head over to image, adjustments, shadows slash highlights and set the shadows to 20% and the highlights to 5%. Use the Ctrl J keyboard shortcut to duplicate the current layer and then go to filter, sharpen, sharpen, Heading over to Filter, Other, High Pass afterwards, making sure to set the radius to 2 pixels. Go to Filter, Sharpen, Sharpen again, and then use the Ctrl Shift U keyboard shortcut to desaturate the layer. Set its blending mode to Soft Light, and after selecting both it and the subject layer, use the Ctrl E keyboard shortcut to merge them into a single layer which we'll rename to Subject. Next, we're going to go to Filter, Sharpen, on Sharp Mask, where we're going to want to set the amount to 100%, the radius to 2.5 pixels, and the threshold to one level. Then, head over to Filter, Stylize, Diffuse, and set the mode to Anisotropic. Once you're done, go to Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise, and set the strength to 7, leaving all the other settings to 0%. Reset your swatches by pressing D, and then add a gradient map adjustment layer to the kernel layer, which we'll name Subject Contrast. Use the Ctrl Alt G keyboard shortcut to create a clipping mask, and then change its blending mode to Soft Light, lowering its opacity to 45%. Add a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer named Subject Saturation and then create a clipping mask using the Ctrl Alt G keyboard shortcut, making sure to set the saturation value to 28. Create a Levels Adjustment layer called Subject Brightness 
which will mask to the subject layer, and then adjust by setting the highlight input level to 240. Select the subject layer, and while holding down the Alt key, drag it above the subject brightness layer to create a duplicate, and then head over to Filter, Other High Pass, and set the radius to 5 pixels. Use the Ctrl Alt G keyboard shortcut to create a clipping mask, and then desaturate the layer using the Ctrl Shift U shortcut, setting the blending mode to hard light, and then rename the layer to subject sharpening. Next, we're going to add the paint drips by first creating a new layer named paint drips. Once we have our new layer, we're going to want to use the eyedropper tool to sample the color of the areas we'll be adding the drips to. And then using the brush tool, we're going to start adding them, making sure to vary their position and size. Take your time, and once you're done, head over to Layer, Layer Mask, Reveal All, in order to create a blank layer mask. Press D to reset your swatches, and after inverting them using the X keyboard shortcut, select the Brush tool, and using a soft brush, paint over the top areas of the drips, in order to blend them better with the subject. Next, we're going to add a vignette effect by creating a new layer called Vignette, and after resetting the swatches using D, go to Edit, Fill, we will want to set the contents to foreground color, leaving all your settings as they are. Press Ctrl A to make a selection of your canvas, and then head over to Layer, Layer Mask, High Selection, unlinking the Layer Mask and Layer Thumbnail by simply clicking on the little link icon. With the layer mask selected, use the Ctrl T keyboard shortcut to transform it, setting both its width and height to 85%. Next, head over to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, making sure to set the radius to 100 pixels, lowering the layer's opacity to 20% afterwards. Finally, we're going to add a curves adjustment layer, which will individually adjust by adding two control points for the red tonal range, lowering the center of the curve for the green one, and increasing the center of the curve for the blue one. And that's pretty much all you have to do. That being said, I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next one.